Hello, my friends, brothers and sisters at Calvary Baptist Church. This is Pastor Moises and uh, Luzimar Moura. We are your missionaries to the Portuguese-speaking countries. And uh, it is a blessing and privilege for us to be able to come to your home today. We are all in lockdown, right? Here in Dallas and there in Derby or Wichita, or Kansas. But uh, it is amazing that uh, we always say that the church is not the building, it's us. And here we are doing church without the building. Praise the Lord that we can get together, uh, even though we are in distance. But uh, we can praise the Lord and uh, learn from His Word and have this good time together. So thank you so much for inviting us to your home today. As a matter of fact, I want to thank you, Pastor Bowman. Thank you, Pastor Bowman, for inviting me and my wife to share what the Lord has done in our lives and, uh, and uh, share a little bit of God's word to you this morning. Wow, well, we have so much to say. Uh, let me let uh, Luzmar talk to you about that. Dear friends of Calvary Baptist Church, we are so thankful for you and for your prayers and also for your financial support to our family. I pray for you every week and I thank God for your lives. Thank God for your, your ministry to us. I always thank our Lord and Savior also for your support and your help during my husband's liver transplant. God heard your prayers, and here he is, <laughs> another person healthy and serving the Lord with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, I'm feeling very, very good, very well. And uh, I really thank God and thank you for your prayers. Uh, it was amazing. It was a uh, wonderful surgery. Eight hours uh, of surgery, but... Uh, I'm feeling great now with a new liver and uh, good health. The only thing I have to take is two medications a day uh, to, as an anti-rejection for the liver. What those medications do, they lower my immune system so that the body will not fight against the new liver. So this is good. On the other hand, it lowers my immune system. So, you know, I'm in a high risk for this COVID-19, which is okay. I'm taking all the precautions, being at home and taking care of myself. And Lucy is also teaching online. And we are very busy. We are doing uh, the ministry, as I always did, inside the house, from home. So I'm teaching many classes overseas from here. And... Uh, uh, I have Bible studies, group meetings, and uh, uh, gr uh, prayer group meetings, and many other things that we do from here. Keep in touch with our people here and overseas. So, as I said, it is a blessing to be able to come to you today and share God's Word. But before we open uh, God's Word, I'd like to uh, tell a little bit, an, an update on our ministry. So, I have a three-minute video that is being shown now, and then we will open God's Word uh, uh, after the, the ministry presentation in this video, okay? Thank you. All right, now we are back. So the ministry that you, uh, the update on our ministry that you just watched, it is your ministry. Calvary Baptist, you are the best supporting church that Luzimar and I have. Uh, you know how to do missions because you love your missionaries and you support them faithfully and uh, generously. So we are thankful. Thank you so much the way you are engaged in our ministry. So many people are, uh, are being touched by you in many countries that we have been serving our wonderful Lord. So thank you again so much. So now let's open our Bibles. Uh, there are several passages that I want to touch this morning with you. 
But uh, I'm gonna share my PowerPoint with you. So you're gonna see me in the whole screen, but you're gonna see the, the PowerPoint presentation. So let me uh, share here my, uh, my screen with you, just a second. <clears throat> so, let's talk about something that is in my heart and probably is in your too. Uh, I never knew that I was anxious until uh, months ago, uh, during my waiting, six months waiting for the liver transplant, and now, especially now. So, I was on a uh, sheltered in England sheltered in uh, for six months, staying in my bed for more than 20 hours a day, waiting for the liver transplant and then after the liver transplant. But now that I can go out, <laughs> I have to stay in. So, but there was a time that I could not sleep and I was anxious and waiting and with pain and everything. And my doctor prescribed me uh, medication for anxiety. I said, no, I never took this in my whole life, but uh, I took. It didn't help much, but, but uh, anyways, I learned that I am also anxious. Um, so today, let's think about anxiety. With all this situation that we are going through, yeah, not being able to do much outside and think that we uh, always did, we cannot do again for a while. So it is hard to wait, 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 and doing not. There is nothing much that we can do other than wait and take all the precautions, right? And so this can uh, bring to us some anxiety. So let's see uh, what the Bible has to say to us about anxiety. So in this presentation, this uh, message, I want to touch uh, on this point to you, seeing what is the definition of anxiety? What are the dangers of being anxious? And is there a cure for that? If it is, what is the cure for anxiety? Um, has everything taken your peace away? What is taking your peace away? Maybe the fear of getting sick? Yeah, with this virus around, it is getting closer and closer to us, right? Uh, I have a, a Bible study <clears throat> with Chinese people from Sao Paulo. Uh, I always had that, and every Saturday we get together, and I share God's word with them. And uh, last Saturday, via Zoom, we were having this Bible study with more than 50 of those friends there in Brazil. And we have 18 medical doctors in that group. And they were very concerned because they are treating those uh, COVID-19 infected patients. And, um, and the two of them were very concerned about it. And so we prayed with them. And last night, uh, the sister of one of those doctors, Dr. Wu, my good friend, and I, I married him and his wife years ago, and uh, she, she called us last night and shared that her brother is infected. Sorry. I love him very much. So he's infected, and he, he brought the, the disease to his family. So he and his wife and two kids, they are all infected dealing with this situation right now. So it is getting closer and closer. It's maybe it's very close to you. Are you fear, fearing or scared of getting sick? We don't know. Maybe we are next. It can happen to anyone. Even taking all the precautions is still possible. We don't know. Are you fear or scared of losing someone? We all are, right? Ah, it is a hard thing, but is this taking your peace away? You have not lost anyone, but are you concerned about it? 
or you're scared of losing your job. Just today, uh, I heard on the news that today is, as I speak to you, it's one week before you're listening to this, watching this presentation, but uh, 7 million Americans are without job already today. Maybe now, I, as you hear me, it's even more. But are you fear? Uh, are you fearing or are you scared of losing your job? Maybe you have lost your job already. And we're all going to be affected by this situation. And the economy, are you scared of the economy? We are all broke, the country is broke. The economy is broke again. We are going through this again after 2008, and now we're going to face that again. And uh, as we heard on the news, maybe we will never be the same as we were before the, the pandemic that we are all facing. And some people are even scared that this is the end of the world. Are you? Are you scared of that? So. All those things, and plus many other things that we have to go through, maybe those things are taking our peace away. So, if that is true, maybe we are anxious about it, about those things. And uh, here's the definition of anxiety. Um, and I learned that I am anxious when I, I saw this definition from the dictionary. It says, anxiety is a painful, or apprehensive discomfort about an imminent or anticipated pain. It's not that we have that. It is that we are concerned about having the problem. The problem is still in the future, but we are facing or suffering now things that is still in the future. That's why it is called anxiety is an abnormal, it's not normal, it's abnormal and overwhelming feeling of apprehension and fear. This is anxiety. There are many synonyms for anxiety. For instance, anguish. I'm not anxious, but I'm feeling this feeling, anguish, distress, anger. I'm like that because I like to have everything under my control as, as much as I can. I have my whole year planned, all the mission trips, all the teachings, everything is here, I can show you. But I'm not in control of that. And so I, when things go out of my control, I tend to be anxious by showing some anger. So this is anxiety as well. So worry, I'm not worried, but if you are worried about something, you are anxious, apprehension or despair. They are all uh, derived from the root of suffocation. Suffocation is the root for anxiety. So when we are anxious, we are feeling like choked or suffocated. So this is anxiety. What does the Bible say about it? What does the word of God has to say to us about anxiety? Here's the definition that we found in the word of God in Mark 4 verses, I'm gonna read just some verse for you, verses 7, 18, and 19. Let me show it to you and you can read from here as well. Uh, this is the passage that Jesus talks about uh, the parable of the uh, sowing the wheat, the, the seed, <laughs> not the weeds, the seed. It says, verse 3, listen, a farmer went out to, show, to sow the seed. And then he says, oh, all the, the, the grounds that the, the seed fell. And so, verse 7 he says, other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Did you hear that? The thorns choked. And then the disciples didn't understand the, the parable. And they asked Jesus to explain to them. And at home, Jesus explained to them and he talked about every one of those seeds and 
And then in verse 18, he says, still others, like the seed, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word. So the word is the seed. So verse 19, he says, but the worries, no, no, the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of, of health, wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. The root here is the, the anxiety. So the word choke, choke, choke here is anxiety. It's the same word used in other passages for anxiety. See, the thorns choke the weeds. And Jesus said, the worries of this life is like the thorns that choke the, the seed. In other passage, there is more, but uh, the term anxiety here and its synonyms like anguish, worry, distress, and anger, they all come from the same root, the root that choked, meaning the suffocation and anguish. Do you see? Anxiety is like feeling choked. <clears throat> and this is dangerous because it affects our emotions, our um, physical, as well as our spiritual side, our spiritual, spirituality. It, it gets everything. And so what are the dangers of being anxious? Remember the passage when Jesus visited uh, Martha and Mary, their brother Lazarus? When this passage doesn't talk, doesn't talk about Lazarus, but Jesus visited his home. Jesus, uh, I have been reading the whole, uh, all four Gospels during this epidemic lockdown, so I have been reading through all the, the four Gospels. And uh, I noticed that Jesus didn't go to many homes. He was in many places, in the synagogues, in the temple, walking with his disciples in many different places. But he visited not more than 10 homes. And Jesus now is going to Martha and sister home to have a good time with them, to share God's word with them. And so Martha thought, oh, the king of kings is come to my home. I will clean this much as I can. I'll give him the best. I will cook the best meal ever for the king. She was right. It was the king. She had to prepare that. And nothing wrong with that. And so verse 30 it says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. In 39, she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Can you picture this? Jesus standing in their home, sitting, and Mary at his feet. Oh, Lord, say more, say more. And uh, she might have so many questions, and Jesus was answering those questions. She was having a good time at the Lord's feet. How about Martha? But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made, had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sisters has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. <laughs> that was the problem. Nothing wrong, Mar Martha, in doing your job. But taking Mary from Jesus' feet. Uh oh. And Jesus, verse 41, says, Martha, Martha. So Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things. Mm -hmm. Martha was worried about cooking, cleaning, and all this stuff. Verse 42. But few things are needed. For indeed, only one 
and Marion has chosen what is better, and it is, and it will not be taken away from her. <laughs> so this is a Mary. It's okay to clean the house. It's okay to cook. Them. That's not necessary. That's not why I'm here for. I'm here for to have a fellowship with you to 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 tell you about God, about what's going to happen. And Mary was there enjoying Jesus' presence, his words. But Mary said, oh, take her, let her help me. And Jesus said, Mary, don't worry. Only one thing is necessary. Bring me a, an apple. That's enough. A cup of coffee. Do you have a cup of coffee? That's all I need. But just a cookie. Do you have a cookie? Give me that cookie. Stay here with Mary. And that's but Mary was not concerned about that. It was, she was concerned about all the things. And so she was missing the point, missing the most important, Jesus' presence in her home. And sometimes we do the same, right? So in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 to 34, we have more about the, the dangers of anxiety. Verse 31, it says, so do not worry. Again, the word worry, anxious, preoccupation, preoccupation for tomorrow, bring tomorrow today. See, so do not worry saying, what shall I eat? What shall I drink? What shall I, what shall we wear? 32, the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. So those things are, are normal. Are, we need those to eat, to drink, and to wear those, and to have a shelter. God knows our needs, and he will supply our needs. But to be worried about it, we don't have to. The pagans, they have to because they don't have faith in, in the God that we know. And so they have to worry, but we don't have to worry about anything. And Jesus says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things that he mentioned will be given to you as well. Therefore, listen, do not worry about tomorrow. Again, worry is an anxiety, is preoccupation about tomorrow. It didn't happen yet, but we are bringing the problems of tomorrow, today, and we suffer the tomorrow, today. And Jesus said, for tomorrow we worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We don't need to bring tomorrow today. We don't need to think, what if I get sick? What if I die? If we die, we go to heaven, right? If you are a believer in Jesus Christ. If not... Stop right now. Pray. Receive Jesus Christ as your only Savior. And then you don't have to worry about dying or about getting sick or about losing your job because he will take care of you and supply all your needs as he has promised. So here's the danger of anxiety. Like Martha, we miss the point. We miss the opportunity of staying at Jesus' feet. That's the most important thing. It's spending time in God's word, in listening, in reading, and enjoying God's word in our lives. And we miss the opportunity of that being preoccupied about tomorrow. Also, we may distrust our God. Instead of trusting the Lord to supply our needs, we, we don't trust him. And we end up acting like the unbelievers who don't have a God like us. So this is a danger, a spiritual, a spiritual danger of being anxious. Are you anxious? Are you living like Martin? We all need to be very careful about anxiety and deal with this. And you ask me, is there a cure for anxiety? Yes. There is no vaccine yet. We don't have a shot that will be, oh, I will never have again the anxiety. 
No, there is no shot for this yet, but there's cure for this. If you are anxious, there is a way to get rid of your anxiety. So let's open God's word to Philippians chapter 4. Here it says, Do not be anxious about anything. And repeat that. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, just like the one we are facing right now, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Present your requests to God in prayer and thanksgiving. What's going to happen if we do this? Verse 7, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See? The anxiety will go away when you go to God's presence and present our requests, thanking Him because He will take care of us. He already did. So when we present to God our anxiety, our anxious, our worries, our preoccupation for tomorrow, Bring to God and say, Lord, this thing is taking my peace away. I'm going to give it to you. He is in place to give us his peace. Enjoying God's peace is the best thing in the whole world. So the only effective remedy for anxiety and to have the peace of God in our lives is the cure. Prayer. Pray, pray, pray. Give to God. Don't take yourself. Don't carry this burden. Give to Him if you are doing this. And let's trust in God. He is in control of everything, right? He's not taken by surprise by anything. This problem that we are facing right now in the whole world, He knows. He's allowing that for some reason that we don't know, but he's in control of that. He knows the end. He's no, he knows the cure. He is dealing with the whole world right now and with us. He wants us to come closer to him and to give back to him and to trust him even more than we have ever done because we have no control whatsoever of anything. So let's pray. Give to God our burdens, our worries, our anxiety, and trust the Lord that he will take care of us. Amen. So therefore, as 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast, that's what we have to do, we have to do, cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Give to him your burden. Bring your anxiety. Bring what is taking your peace away. Give to him. He cares for you. Has it he not? Yes, he has taken care of us. We don't have to carry his burden. He needs the point of having a good time in God's presence and enjoying his peace. It reminds me that uh, that farmer who was driving his truck to his farm and his wife on his side. And as they drove that uh, to, 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 to the farm, they saw a man walking uh, on foot, uh, carrying a very heavy burden on his shoulders, a very heavy bag. And uh, they driver, the farmer, he felt sorry for the man and he stopped his car and he said, hey, where are you going? And the man said, I'm going over there. So, come on, I'll take you there. So, there's no place here, but get in the tire there at the pickup. And the man jumped in on and so he drove him. He drove the guy. After a while, the driver saw on the the mirror and saw that the man was carrying the bag on his back, was sitting there in the back. 
carrying the bag, heavy bag on his back. Said, what? This guy's crazy. We are giving him a ride and he's still carrying that heavy burden on his back. So he stopped the car and outside and talked to, to the man and said, sir, I'm giving you a ride because you're carrying this heavy bag on your back. Put this off, sir. Put it off. And the man said, sir, you have been so kind to me that I didn't want to bother you by carrying this on your truck. Can you believe it? I'm doing the same, and you are doing the same with the Lord. He has carried a heavy burden for us. He carried the heavy cross for us to save us. He has taken care of us, our needs, and we are wanting to care our burdens and lose and miss the peace of God and with this heavy burden on us. We don't have to. So let's cast all our anxiety to him because he is faithful and he cares for you, my friend. Let's pray. Let's give him that. Give that to God. So let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come to your presence, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, our Savior. And through your Spirit, Lord, we pray now, asking you to forgive us. First of all, forgive us, Lord. We are here, we know you, we are your children, but somehow we are letting this situation take our peace away and we are having this burden, we are carrying this burden by being anxious about tomorrow, about this disease, this situation, losing our job or not having money to pay our bills or other things, Lord, forgive us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, forgive us. And we bring to you, Lord, this situation. You are in control of our lives, of the whole world. And you love us so much, and you thank you, Lord, for this. And we give to you this burden, because we know that you take care of us. You have done that already. You are faithful. And we want to glorify your name by giving back to you this burden and feel your peace again and be able to glorify your name in showing others our faith in you so that you'll be glorified by other people come to you in faith because we are giving them a good testimony of our faith. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you so much. Bless this home right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you, each one of you and your family. Cover Baptist Church, every one of your families and homes. May the Lord protect you and guard you. I pray and you know, I continue to pray for you as you have been praying for me. In Jesus' name, I love you. And I hope very soon to be able to visit you and give a Brazilian hug. I love you. God bless. Bye.